These are the seven deadly sins that books can commit that will make me rate them two stars or less and or throw them against the wall. So instead of titling this video most disappointing reads of the year like I did last year, this is my seven deadly book sins. So what happened was as I was compiling all of the list of books that I've rated two stars or below this year, I started to notice some trends and they fit into seven categories. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But I have one giant caveat and that is while these seven deadly sins are accurate right now for my tastes, those might change in the future. So I reserve the right to 100% change my mind. So let's get into these. Sin number seven is literary science fiction. Now, what the heck is literary science fiction? And what do I mean by that? I am not quite sure, gotta be honest. That's why I sometimes accidentally pick up these books. But what I can tell you is that these books tend to be really high in drama, really high in internal monologue, and really low on the science fiction elements. And that seems to be a lot of what I'm missing in a lot of these books, is I read it for the science fiction element, and yet it was like mentioned on page three and then never mentioned again kind of a situation. Um, a lot of these books tend to be books that win honorary literary awards like the Booker Prize or the Hemingway Prize. So one of the books that fits into this category is going to be Severance by Ling Ma. This book is kind of a pseudo zombie novel. I know she's trying to make some statements about society. I just didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> I did not love this book. I'm sorry. Another one that is also a book that I found because it was on the Booker Award, and that is In Ascension by Martin Innes. I remember being so excited about this book and pre-ordering a copy of it, and yet it just didn't work out for me. And I don't know why, because it starts with like a marine biologist who studies little tiny molecules in the ocean, and then she gets invited to go into space and uses her knowledge from the ocean in space, which sounds like an incredible concept, but it really wasn't about all of those cool, super cool scientific ideas. It was more about her getting over her childhood. And that's not something that I wanted to read that book for. So I ended up really not enjoying that story. And I'm really sad about it because I wanted to like it. Another one was a book that was on my list, The Memory Police. It's just a very thinly veiled book about Alzheimer's. And I think that that's a great topic to talk about, but that's not what I wanted to read about. I wanted to read about missing memories and police. Anyway, now let's move on to my number six sin. And that is gonna be being inflammatory, crass, or violent without a purpose. Now, this seems like a really weird one to list on here, but as you can tell, I'm just looking for big trends. And there are some senses of humor that just don't match quite up with mine, or there's some overly violent books that I felt like were just way more graphic than what was called for for the story. And I just don't... I don't like that in my stories. So one of the books that I read that qualifies on this list is gonna be Mechanical Failure. This book was a military science fiction and it's a satire and I love some satires. But not only was the humor just not my style, but I felt like there was some underlying anger issues towards the military in this book. And I finished this book thinking, man, this author needs a little bit of therapy. <laughs> I don't want to finish my books with that impression. And I, I'm sad to say that this book just didn't work for me at all. Another book that I would put in this category would be a Hugo nominee, which is unusual. And one that I've really loved the short stories by, and that is going to be Towing Jehovah by Morrow. This is a book that <laughs> has a really strange premise. God dies and falls into the Atlantic Ocean. Angels appear to people around the world, specifically our main character, who is a ship captain, and asks him to tow God's body to the prepared burial site in Antarctica. 
and chaos ensues. Um, this sounds like something that is a little bit of a snarky, sacrilegious, sort of celestial sci-fi that I think is a pretty interesting topic and I was really hopeful that this book would use all of the satire to talk a little bit more in depth about society and our religious beliefs and what it means to be human and all of those things that I know and love and yet that didn't really happen. As a matter of fact, it kind of seems like Mauro was just trying to see what he could get away with. And maybe it's because the social commentary is in book two and three, but I really just didn't enjoy book one. So why would I read book two or three? You know what I'm saying? So another one that was particularly violent in its descriptions is one that I know is going to be very controversial. And that is More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon. I just didn't like the descriptive detail of all the backgrounds of the main characters. And I understand that they came from really rough backgrounds and that was part of who they were. But did we really need an in-depth description of some of the things that they had to go through? I didn't, especially not for the end of that book. And well, I do think that book had some really bright, very clever ideas, and I did enjoy those concepts. I did think it was overly descriptive in its violence. So I am going to put it on the list because it is a trend that I have noticed. So my deadly sin number five is going to be preaching to the point that obstructs the plot or chokes the readers as you shove it down their throat, right? Because we all enjoy that, don't we? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, right? Everybody has a limit. And I usually can forgive small chapters or paragraphs for the author and just kind of move on. But if it gets to the point where the plot is no longer happening because they have to go off on their tangents, or if it's just something that keeps showing up over and over and over, it starts to get on my nerves. So unfortunately, some books that I had this year that fit this category are going to be C.S. Lewis, Out of the Silent Planet, and the second book in that series, Perlandria. This is the Space Trilogy, and this book was, going into it, going to be a little bit more Christian science fiction. I knew that starting, but I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a story than just an allegory for Jesus is cool, right? And I just kind of expected more from C.S. Lewis. Unfortunately, this space trilogy is just so on the nose, I did not enjoy that particular one. Another one was a Robert Heinlein book called The Puppet Masters. And I think this one just went overboard with his discussion of how communists are bad. We get it, the Cold War sucks, communism sucks, okay, move on, Heinlein. And unfortunately, he just didn't, and I just couldn't take it. So, the last one in this category for this year is one I didn't really want to be on this list, and I'm kind of surprised it made it. And that one is a book by John Wyndham called Stowaway to Mars. This is a book that I started with lots of high hopes because I really like some John Wyndham books, and this one was a really good read. I really liked it, except for some reason he thinks that even smart women are confused by technology, and this is just a condition that they have because they're women. And while that was weird and kind of annoying, I could kind of move past that chapter and go back to the story where it just kept coming up over and over and over and over to the point where I was like, really, John Wyndham, do I have to keep reading about this? Because it's really taken away from the story here, man. Like, go back to Mars. Why are we talking about women can't handle technology? I don't know, man. It just, it got really annoying and it was unfortunately on my list this year. So Deadly Sin number four is going to be a book that was written in the late 1800s or early 1900s. I know this sucks because it's just a time period where for whatever reason, the books that were written during this time frame are books that I absolutely hate. Unfortunately, that includes a lot of H.G. Wells. And this year I tried a new author in that era and that was Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I know, I know, I'm like the worst, 
but I don't know what it is about that time period or the way they wrote stories, the way they put the plot together, and I just am not a fan. All right, deadly sin number three. And that is an obscenely slow, repetitive plot or intentionally confusing. And I don't think that anybody enjoys reading books that make them feel bored or stupid, or worse, a combination of the two. So unfortunately, I have had a couple of books that apply in this category, and that is gonna be oh, both Slaughterhouse-Five and Sirens of Titan. They were both obscenely slow and incredibly repetitive. And I know that they work for a lot of people out there and that's okay. But where I am in my reading journey, I just couldn't get into them. I just died of boredom. I had to drag myself and force myself through those books and that's not great. Other books on this section is gonna be Calcutta Chromosome written by Ghosh. I really like the idea of a science fiction novel that takes place in India, but for some reason this particular one just slogged me down with trying to give me fun facts about diseases that didn't really seem to matter for the plot, and the pacing and the style with which he wrote made me feel like I was walking through maple syrup. It was that bad. So I will not be picking up another book by Ghosh anytime soon. The last book in this category was another one that a lot of people may not like. Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin. I know, I know, I wanted to like it, I really did, I'm really sorry. I read it and I just, I didn't get any of the vibes that everybody tell me this book is about. I didn't really understand that it was a romance. I didn't really understand what it was about. I didn't understand the whole gender situation. This is a book that just left me feeling very confused. And I don't know, like maybe it's too smart for me, but I didn't connect to any of the characters. I did not enjoy this book for lots and lots of reasons. And I felt like it was slow and arduous and I just didn't like it. So doesn't mean I don't like Ursula Le Guin in general. There are lots of her other books that I do enjoy, but this particular one was really just not my cup of tea. That brings us to a deadly sin number two. And this is all about expectations. So in particular, it's gonna be expectations set by the back of the book, by the marketing team, or it's gonna be expectations around the hype. Now, I understand that this is unfair to judge books by things that other people have added to this book, but the truth is they do actually affect me. What your cover looks like, the back of the book summary, what your marketing team pitches the book as, all of those things really do change my expectations of a novel. And if it doesn't meet that, then I tend to not like it because it wasn't what I expected. But some of the books that I really struggled with, Grelick by Dean Foster. This is an author that I was really expecting to like, and it was a book that's recently come out by him that I thought was gonna be fantastic. It follows a gentleman who is the last human in the universe, and a lot of aliens are very interested in hearing the last human tell what humanity was for. And this man is very grumpy because he doesn't think that he's representative of the human species as a whole. And the book itself let me down with the ending. There's a lot of things that it promised that it didn't follow through with. And I was overall just very disappointed in what this book could have been and wasn't. Another book that I think let me down with expectations is Daughter of Dr. Moreau. This book I talked about on my Hugo reaction video this year, and it was the one that I was really hoping would save the Hugo list for me. And instead, it was like, eh, nothing special. And because it's on the Hugo list, it set me up for great expectations and really let me down. The one ultimate sin that I cannot forgive. Deadly sin number one, a waste of potential. Nothing gets me like having a fantastic premise and then doing nothing with it. I can't take it. It's like the worst thing that I could possibly imagine in my reading. So books that are incredible examples of this that I will never get over is books like Neil Gaiman's American Gods, or I would also add Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. Another one was Dead Moon by Peter Kleins, which was a zombie apocalypse 
on the moon could have been cool, definitely was a waste of potential. There's a lot of books in here, the ones that I rant about the most, that are the books that, that I can't tolerate because they coulda, shoulda, woulda been cool. The idea was cool, but the execution was just a waste of all of that potential. So as you can tell, I'm not passionate about this subject in any way, but it's those books that are waste of potentials that are really my ultimate nemesis. <laughs> so you guys have to let me know in the comment section down below, what are your ultimate deadly sins for books? What are the things that are trends that multiple books can fit into the category of? Until next time guys, see you in the next video.